Welcome back to Celebrity Radio. It's Alex Belfield talking to some of the country's biggest stars and some of my favourite people. And we've got one for you today. Denise Pearson is the lady behind Five Star and they're back with a brand new album called Gold, which has the greatest hits. Yes, from Can't Wait Another Minute to If I Say Yes and of course Love Games and Crazy. They're all on this new album by Five Star. And Denise joins us now from her garden in the sunshine. How are you? <laughs> I'm glorious. It's a glorious day. Thanks, Alex. You're not just glorious. You're also delicious and that's the thing about you this was a certain time wasn't it the 80s with this type of music and it's never been more popular it seems the last couple of years people have really got back into it Mm -hmm. that's because it's unforgettable it's um, that era the 80s era was the era of feel good music you know and everybody wants to feel good everybody wants to feel in love and that's what we were singing about in the 80s just feeling good and, and being in love you know takes a minute doesn't it for music to come back round and I look at people like Bross uh, who you work with of course back in the day and people like that and, and again there's a certain resurgence after you sort of go from being a teenager doing the music to then be sort of a uh, early 30s aren't you something like that and, yes, yes. And, pe- <laughs> and people love this to sort of see you reinvented I suppose that's part of the joy yes it is um, that's longevity you've got to go with the times really um, but keep that certain essence of what you brought in the first place that's what makes you keeps you original I think um, uh, Five Star at the time we, we were we were the only ones doing the dance routines and the costumes and uh, it was amazing it's, it's nice to be original but yeah always keeping that original um, uh, essence and, and reinventing yourself it was an amazing time and, of course, brought to life by your father, Buster, who sort of made all this happen. I mean, he literally created and managed this whole thing and kept it going. I mean, how is that when your dad's telling you not only how to be a daughter, but how to be a megastar too? Wonderful, because he was, you know, he has the experience. You you can't pay for that experience. Um, I mean, he played on the Wilson Pickett Midnight Hour tour and um, played with Des- Desmond Decker, and he's worn... Uh, many hats, you know, distributing records, managing other uh, groups, and uh, as a musician himself, you know, so you can't pay for that, and I think he did a tremendous job, he protected us all, he had five teenagers straight out of school, you know, he must have been, uh, his nose must have been wrecked, Mm. but it was um, straight from home, straight to the Royal Variety, straight from, straight back home, and same with the Wogans and the Top of the Pops, so, um, yeah, he did an incredible, incredible job. And it is tricky, isn't it, navigating show business and knowing what to say yes to, but more importantly, what to say no to. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, you have to have a plan. Once you've got that plan and you stick to it and you go with it, you know, it, it's, you, you can only thrive. Take me back to the 80s and the year that you knew you'd made it. I'm wondering, sort of 87, 88, was these the years that blew your mind with the popularity and success? <laughs> yes, it was wonderful because I was a loner at school. And then um, uh, Dad got the group together, and then all of a sudden we were on Russell Harty show, and my profile was <laughs> through the roof when I went back to school. It's like, yes, and we saw you last night on TV doing the robot, and it was just it was phenomenal. And then um, we had the, our record on Earth of the Pops, uh, Let Me Be the One All Fall Down, did the video, and uh it was all go from uh, Pebble Mill at One. Do you remember Pebble Mill at One? I loved that. Yeah, of course, because I'm from Nottingham. So for Birmingham, it was like the closest bit of show business that we'd got around here. Oh, wonderful. That, that was our big break. Um, mm. RCA called us um, and they wanted to sign the group and it was onwards and upwards from there. We had two sold out uh, European tours <laughs> in all of the building. <laughs> <laughs> what was it like then going into school the next day after you'd appeared on Top of the Pops or you'd done something like that? I suppose friends who had nothing to do with you suddenly wanted to know who you were and be your best friend. Yeah, of course. It was amazing. It was like I was a celebrity of the school. I was only 15. Um, so I was I had one more year to one more year to go. Um, but I didn't take up that other year. But it was amazing. My profile was just, you know, through the roof. Everybody wanted autographs uh, and wanted to hang out. And so, yeah, it was, it was, it was fun. Of course, we look back to the 80s and it was such a bigger time back then. I mean, everything mm-hmm. had more viewers. People cared more. Back in the day, I mean, even those lunchtime programs would get millions of viewers. 
Yes, yes, sweetheart. And the units that we used to sell, I mean, we went quadruple quadruple platinum um, for a couple of our albums and you know it was it was great to go and buy the vinyls at the shops go through the music and just ha hands on touching touching the stuff that you the, the product that you want to buy looking through the sleeves and you know reading the the, um, the, the content of the sleeves and um, it, it's become I, I can't believe how time has fly, flown it's just become old school now you know uh but it was a better time i think mm. but uh this with this um gold album we are actually um putting out a cd plus vinyl so um gold vinyls which is great so when you order it on amazon or wherever you order it you get it through the post and you can have it in your hands instead of just downloading it you know when you look oh at God. this front cover of this new gold album which is available now five star gold <laughs> Is it like a different person? Does it seem a million years ago or is it just yesterday? Just yesterday. That's exactly what the thought that came into my mind. It's just yesterday when we had those fives on our on our sweatshirts, you know? Hmm. And still young at heart, you know, we still do the dance routines. I do the dance routines. And um, I think I'm kind of stuck in the 80s because it was the best. It was the best time. And, I'd, you know, there's nowhere I'd rather be than stuck in the 80s and feel good music and... and uh, just having love around is an incredible journey. It's a shame I've got to ask you this next question, but I have got to yeah. ask it because, of course, the okay. 80s was part of that BBC U Tree stuff. As a female young performer back then, were you yeah. treated well? Was your father able to protect you? Or were there moments where you thought, hang on, there's something going wrong here? Oh, no, we were treated well. I mean, um, my dad took all the, the as being our manager, uh, he disclosed to us whatever he thought that we needed to know. I mean, the internet wasn't that big, so you couldn't really go on and read. If, if anybody had anything bad to say, you couldn't really go on and read it, And um, as, as it is now. Um, but still, I still don't go on and read <laughs> any of that stuff. Um, but, uh, yeah, we were protected. And at the time, I was... 19, I think, 18, 19, I had, you know, a Lamborghini. I was driving around in my Lamborghini. Wow. <laughs> what not to be happy about? <laughs> and everybody behaved themselves in terms of management and all of that stuff and, and the creepiness that we read about now at Pebble Mill and Television Centre. You, you were sort of guarded from that. That's a relief. Yes, yes, yes. Daddy kept us in a bubble, you know, just ushered, just, it was a great, it was a great uh, bubble. You know, you know father with um, five teenagers out there. He's, you know, he's protecting us from the get-go as soon as we leave the door at home. And he must have known because music, you know, over the years has got so many tragedies, hasn't it? And so many bad stories. He must have known, these are my daughters. I need to make sure that they're, they're safe. That's beautiful. Absolutely, like any, any other father. Yeah. yeah, fantastic. Absolutely. Then we moved to the 90s, and of course, you popped to America for a bit and moved to California. Yeah. Why did you choose to do that? Was it just to do with show business, or was it more about your private life? I think yeah. it was both, because at the time, we were moving out of Stone Court, and then um, we moved out into the country, Hatfield, and there was press just all around the property and we uh we didn't come out until two years i mean two weeks later two years later two weeks later because they were you know the the cameras were you know, the place was flooded and then daddy decided to um move us to california to you know once you go up you must come down and and that's kind of what happened and to um, protect us daddy just ushered us out of the the country and and that's where i met my husband and had our, our, our two children. Um, my son's 25 now and my daughter's 24 and they've just graduated university. Um, my daughter studied music, law and production and my son studied graphics and he's a little DJ in his time, um, spare time. But um, yeah, it was, it's, it's been a terrific journey and it's been a lot of, uh, we've been protected. What an amazing life and what an amazing career. When you listen to the songs on this album, I mean, it's a three CD set, which is extraordinary. The amount of songs you did and the sort of prolific uh, back catalogue that you've got. Which would be your favourite song to sing now? Because, I mean, you've been doing festivals that we're going to talk about in a minute. Which is still yeah. the one you enjoy singing? Can't Wait. We only we always start with Can't Wait. Yeah. 
um, Rain or Shine has been very difficult for me. And it was difficult recording it too because we had to um, go to about, it was a third recording studio that I felt comfortable with the singing booth to sing that song. And we had quite a lot of problems uh, in studio with that song. And Billy Lidsley, one of the writers of that song, said, you know what, when you have all these problems, this is a hit, this is going to be a hit. And he was right. Um, but um, I've, I've learned to kind of like put my voice back and put my resonate my notes through my nose because I used to sing a lot in my in my nose up in my nasal passage uh, when I was a teenager so I have to know where to put that vocal mm. but I think um, I've gotten used to singing um, Rain or Shine now but Can't Wait I think uh, is the song for me What's it like walking out now in your early 30s in front of all these people and recreating these numbers from 1986 Wonderful Especially when we do the track dates, and especially when we do the live ones, it's got that live essence to it and different um, arrangements. But I do love to do the track dates because you hear the original musicians, Paul Jackson Jr. and Phil and Gaines, great Phil and Gaines on keyboard, all the original um, samples, but that people sample, the DJs sample um, for this, this era now. Uh, the sounds are just incredible. It just puts me right back in studio in the 80s just incredible thank you so much for your time denise uh, five star gold is available now it's a three cd set uh, from the gold collection and it's got basically every song you could possibly want from five star and uh, it's been so lovely talking to you keep on keeping on and let's talk in another couple of decades when uh, yes, when you'll still be singing these songs fantastic <laughs> wonderful thank you so much alex have a wonderful day lovely to talk to you